Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. We often mention safety benefits on a lot of the installation videos that we do. Let's be honest, in the last 50 years, safety's obviously come a long way. Fortunately, it's not feasible to add an ABS braking system or airbags to your classic Mustang. But there are a lot of places such as the braking system and lighting that can be easily improved to make your Mustang a lot more safe to drive. One area that's very easy to upgrade is going to be the factory seat belts. While lap belts might have been acceptable back in the 60s, by today's standards, they just don't do a good job keeping the driver or passenger in the seat in case of an accident. So today we're going to show you how to remove your lap belts and upgrade to a modern three-point seat belt. The kit we're going to be installing will work in your 64 through 73 coupe convertible or fastback. We're going to show you today how to install them using our 65 Mustang coupe. They're available in all of your factory colors. It's a complete kit for both driver and passenger and includes all hardware necessary for installation. For this installation, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, right angle Phillips head bit driver, 2.5 millimeter Allen key, 16 millimeter wrench, 3 8 ratchet, 19 millimeter deep socket, 16 millimeter deep socket, 16 millimeter shallow socket, 5 8 socket, short extension, drill, 5 30 second drill bit, 15 30 second drill bit, rivet gun, marker, and safety glasses. For your 64 through 67 coupe or fastback, as well as a 64 through 73 convertible, your anchor point's gonna be right up here. From 68 on, they actually did have a shoulder belt option, so you'll have an anchor point in the ceiling for your third point. These seat belts are gonna be designed for front use, but you can actually use them in the rear as well. You simply mount the retractors to the rear deck. The first part of the installation is to remove our factory seat belts. Since we do have to remove the quarter trim panel for installation, our next step is to remove the back seat. So we pull up on the bottom cushion. Your car should have two bolts holding the bottoms in. In our case, they're missing. Once you remove those bolts, you pull out and kick it upward. I'll remove the window handle. One retaining screw in here is going to loosen that up. It'll pop right off. Move all the screws that are holding the quarter trim panel. Once the quarter trim's loose, remove the last two screws from your door sill plate and then pull off the wind lace. This is a factory hole you're going to find in all models. This is where we're actually going to drill for our top anchor point. You're going to start on the inside, you're going to drill this through, then we'll have to reinstall the quarter trim panel and line it up from the other side and drill through a quarter trim panel. Make sure the bracket fits like it's supposed to and everything's nice and clear and if it's flush on the outside. Now we can reinstall our quarter trim panel, we'll drill that next. While it may seem like overkill, I suggest putting a couple of the screws in. You want to make sure the quarter trim panel is exactly where it's going to sit when it's fully installed so the hole's in the right place. Quarter trim panel in place. Now we're going to drill through from the outside in. There we go. That's where our top anchor is going to go. Now we're gonna pull the quarter trim panel off the driller holes for our rivets. In theory, you could leave this together if you drill the holes very shallow and are careful, but to be safe, I'm gonna pull the trim panel off. First, we're gonna mark the holes where the bracket goes. Now we're gonna reinstall the quarter trim panel just to double check everything lines up before we put our rivets in. Okay. 
Everything looks good and ready to install our rivets. Now we're going to move the rest of the screws holding on our door sill plate so we can pull the carpet back and work on the anchor for the floor. Small little right hand screwdriver will make quick work of the last two screws. If you don't have any way to get in there, you can remove the seat and get to them that way. Now we're going to work on mounting the floor piece. To do that, we're going to put this piece on first, make sure our anchor is in place. You actually want to put the plastic spacer on so you don't mess up your quarter panel. You want to get an idea of where it's going to go. You want to go straight down as much as possible so this doesn't bind up when you're pulling the belt through it. Right about there. Let's get an idea of where you want it. Now we're going to pull the carpet back. Push this aside for a second. You want to pull it out a little bit so you get the flat part on the floor. That's where it's going to go. You can't put it against the rockers. There's no way to get in there and tighten the other side. So right about there. And that's the bracket supplied. Basically, we're going to drill a hole through our floor, put a washer on the bottom, and the retractor is going to mount to this piece here. We want it to sit flat, so we're going to cut the corner of this off and just get it out of the way. There, mark our hole. Oh. Grab the large washer. Now we'll get the carpet back in place here. Cut a little slit for the bracket. Now we'll bolt the retractor to the bracket we just installed. You want to make sure the belt's not twisted. We're going to install the next bracket in the factory mounting hole. Again, using the factory hole and factory hardware, install a receiver. We want to repeat the process of the three point seat belt on the other side, and we can put our interior back together. Start with the door sill plates, then we'll install our back seat. And your installation is finished. The three point seat belt is going to make our 65 Mustang much safer to drive. Keep in mind, because of the lower mounting point and the fact that they are a universal seat belt, you will have some extra slack when the seat belt is not connected. Overall, installation is not too bad. It should only take you around two hours. You'll be back on the road in no time.